your very first lesson, we actually learned that music is a language and it has six parts of speech. These are the six main areas of music. Pitch, rhythm, timbre, dynamics, technique, and notation. Well, uh, in order to be a real player, you got to make sure that you can answer yes to those six different questions over there. A lot of people are only fooling themselves into believing that they're playing music. You can look back at tape number one and memorize all that stuff. We got too much to talk about today to really do much of a review. I just wanted to remind you that the largest body of information that you have to learn about in music is this stuff about pitch. What is pitch about? Well, remember, as most of you know, pitch is about high and low. But high and low what? Well, the first word we learn to associate with pitch is it's all about what notes you play. And um, we take these notes and we arrange them in various patterns. And that's what chords and scales and melody and harmony and intervals and progressions and arpeggios, all the very things you want to learn about, that's all about pitch. And that's the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. Okay, let's flip the page here, and the first thing we're going to do with pitch is we're going to get just a little bit scientific about it. So, what do we know about pitch so far? Well, we know that pitch is about high and low. But high and low what? Well, the first word, as I said, that we learn to associate with pitch is it's all about what notes you play. But the other big word that you want to learn to associate with pitch is the whole concept of frequency. This is the scientific word for what pitch is all about. Now, some of you might remember a little bit of this from science class at one time or another. You know about sound waves, and you know that everything that's making noise is vibrating, and it's sending out waves through the atmosphere. Well. Um, in a sense, that's all your guitar basically is. It's just a sound wave generator. It just generates sound waves, and you can very specifically control the frequency. And what is the frequency of the sound wave? Let's say um, I play this note on a piano keyboard. And this is a low pitch note, isn't it? And let's say we could actually see what sound waves look like. There is a device called an oscilloscope that's kind of like a computer screen, and you could look and you could see what this sound wave looked like. So I play this low note on the piano here, and we look and we see a sound wave that goes by, and it's looking like this. And this sound wave is traveling in a specific direction. Let's say it's traveling in this direction, right like this. Now, what they'll tell you the frequency of the sound wave is, is the number of wave peaks. Why the peaks? Well, it's just a convenient place to measure from. But it's the number of wave peaks that pass a fixed point in a certain amount of time, and maybe that fixed point is your ear. So let's say there's your ear right there, and the sound wave is entering your ear. Frequency is the number of waves that enter your ear in a certain amount of time, usually measured in cycles per second or in units called hertz. Now, at one moment, we're hearing this low pitch note like this, and we see a sound wave that looks like this, now, the next moment, let's say I play a high pitch note up here on the keyboard. That's a high pitch note, isn't it? We look back at the oscilloscope again and we see a sound wave going by that looks like this. Now, obviously, these wave peaks are much closer together than these are. Looks like it's somewhere in the vicinity of about 10 to 1 here. Now, so what that means is a lot more of these sound waves are going to bump into your eardrum in a second than these are up here. So this would be considered low frequency, and this is high frequency. And low frequency means low pitch, and high frequency means high pitch. So it's all about how far apart the waves are from one another that, is, that determines the frequency of the sound. Well, as we said, really, you know, we keep calling the guitar the dumb machine, and, and we're going to be covering how it works in the next lesson. But, you know, now it's time for us to actually understand what kind of a machine it is. Uh, a, a musical instrument is nothing more than a sound wave generator. And, and all it meant to do is, is generate these sound waves. Not only that, it generates sound waves of very precise and controllable frequencies. But how does it do that? Well, different instruments do it in different ways, but you're here to learn about the guitar, which is a stringed instrument. What that means is you've got a piece of wire stretched between two points. And what you do is you pluck that wire and you cause it to vibrate back and forth like that. Those are the vibrations of the string. Well, the speed 
at which that string goes back and forth is what puts the wave peaks where they are. So the speed of the vibration of the string is what controls the frequency. If that string is wobbling back and forth fairly slowly, it tends to send out waves that are further apart. But if that string is vibrating back and forth at a million miles an hour, it sends out waves that are closer together like that. So for our basic lay purposes, just to understand how the guitar works, pitch is about frequency, which is all about the speed of vibration of the string. It's the speed of the vibration of the string that determines the frequency of the note. But what we said was you can actually control the frequency, you can control the pitch, you can control the vibrating speed of the string on a guitar. How do you do that? Well, we humans control the speed of vibration in stringed instruments using three different factors. The first factor is the mass of the string. That's why if you look at your guitar strings, they aren't all the same thickness, are they? If you've put your strings on properly, which is very important, um, you, you'll notice that the, uh, the low pitch strings are thicker than the high pitch strings are. So therefore, they're going to vibrate slower and, and send out waves that are further apart. That's, so when you put your strings on your guitar, you've got to make sure you put them on in the right order and there's stuff to know about string gauge and stuff like that. We can't go into that right now. Um, now, that's factor number one. What's the second factor that we use to control? the vibrating speed of the string. It is the tension that you stretch the string to. So that's why you've got your tuning machines on your guitar up there. These are these things that you tighten and loosen the strings with, and that's what tuning the guitar is all about. Um, uh, uh, just a quick word about tuning, too, if I haven't mentioned this before. The best way, and really the only way, that you're going to want to think about tuning your guitar is get yourself an electronic tuner. And my recommendation is get yourself an electronic chromatic tuner, an auto-chromatic tuner. And uh, we'll be talking about this later in the program. But that's really the only way that you're going to want to try to tune your guitar. Tuning the guitar by ear is just too difficult for beginners, and you will waste too much time and, and, and not get the result you want anyway. So get yourself an electronic chromatic tuner and be done with it right there. So that's what tuning is. That's the second way that we adjust the vibrating speed of the string is by tightening or loosening them to certain, shall we say, culturally agreed upon pre-prescribed vibrating speeds, and that's what tuning your instrument is. But really, it's factor number number three down here that's really the big one when it comes to actually playing songs on your instrument. The third way that we manipulate the vibrating speed of the string is by controlling the length of the string. And people go, huh? Wait a minute, how does that work? Well, I'll show you on my guitar here. Um, it's w moment by moment, it's the length of the string. How do you actually play n different notes on a guitar? Well, what you do is you move your fingers around on the neck of the guitar on these things called frets. I'm moving my fingers around up here. What am I doing when I do that? Well, I'm changing the length of the string. Hi, I'm Scotty West, creator of the Absolutely Understand Guitar Video Home Study Program. Hey, thanks for all the positive feedback on our video guitar lessons. We're now uploading new lessons right from our DVD Home Study Program. Each lesson is 70 minutes long, but we've chopped them up into 10-minute chapters to fit on YouTube, so each lesson will have seven chapters. It's critical that you watch these chapters in order. Make sure you start with Lesson 1, Chapter 1, then move to Lesson 1, Chapter 2, etc. When you've finished all the chapters for Lesson 1, then move on to Lesson 2. Hey, some of this stuff you might already know, and some of it's a little dry. You're going to wonder, do I really need to know this stuff? The answer is yes. Each one of these chapters contains little gems of information that nobody's told you yet, and these are the missing pieces that are preventing you from seeing the big picture. Don't cheat yourself out of these valuable realizations. Stick with the program. Also, consider our complete DVD home study program. Our high-resolution DVD video is much better than these fuzzy little YouTube clips, and you'll also get all our cool printed material, too. So good luck with your music and enjoy the lessons.